Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck, and I'm gonna make a recipe right now that has nothing to do with the Instant Pot, not a thing. But it's so easy and so wonderful and so of the times for Passover that I had to share it with you. Now people, if you love walnuts and if you love apples and you love some honey and some cinnamon and maybe a little bit of some really sweet grape kind of wine, well, this recipe is for you. To those people out there who know the holiday and know this dish already, it's called charoset or charoset. If you want to, you know, just look at it and be like, what is that word, charoset? No, it's pronounced charoset. And you got to do that thing with the back of your throat. Like you have, you know, like something stuck in it. Charoset. Or you can just, you know, just say charoset. Simple, a little light one. You're gonna see it's very, very easy to make. It's just a few ingredients chopped up and mixed together in a bowl. So without the Instant Pot this time, but a really easy dish and very satisfying no matter what holiday you celebrate, no matter what religion you are, food knows no religion. Let's make some delicious, sweet, Haroset. So a critical ingredient to haroset are apples, and we want to use three of them, and I want to use a variety. It's always best to use a variety and mix and match some apples. So I want to use a Granny Smith apple, a Fuji apple, and a Gala apple, okay? And I'm not even going to use my magical powers to snap them all right now, because I want to show you how to properly dice these apples, because that's exactly what we want to do. So let's take the Granny Smith first. To begin with, I want to peel the apple. Okay, now that we've peeled it, we want to cut it up. And I want to do that by taking a knife and cutting it into four quarters, right down the center first. And then cut right to the core again and cut it so we have, like I said, quarters, four wedges. There we go. Now take a paring knife and then just simply cut out the core section of the apple, obviously being very careful because we don't want you to cut your fingers, especially with a sharp paring knife like this. All right, so the core is cut out of that piece and we'll do the rest with the remaining three halves. All right, so now once we've used our paring knife to cut out the core of each wedge, I want to take each wedge and put it on its side, kind of just like so, and then cut like thin slices, kind of just like this. This is actually just fine, just like that, okay? And then as we're done with them, just restack them together as if they're reforming each other. And you can restack the wedges in two halves, by the way, if it'll be a little easier that way. Now what I want to do is I want to now cut long ways. So I will have strips like this. And now we just want to dice them up by cutting the other way. And there we go, guys. Easily diced apples. Simple as that. Now let's just do that with the remaining parts. And then we can repeat the process with the rest of our apples. But now I'm going to use my snapping powers. There we go. We've diced all of our apples up now, and now we can set those aside. Now I want to take a cup of walnuts, and I want to smash them up. So I'm going to place them inside of a plastic baggie, and then I'm going to take a rolling pin or something firm, and then just crush them up. All right, and once we're looking like this in terms of crushiness, we're good. Let's open our bag up, and when the walnuts look like this in terms of their crushiness and size, then we're all good. All right, moving on. Okay, so now let's take a large bowl and we're gonna take our apples that are nice and diced up and we're gonna add them to it. Actually, you probably could have just put the apples in there in the first place, but whatever. And let's add in our walnuts as well. I'm gonna add in one and a half tablespoons of a raw or pure honey. Doesn't really matter, just honey. Aren't these little honey bears so adorable? You just wanna squeeze it! Now I wanna add in one tablespoon of a light or dark brown sugar, a half a teaspoon of cinnamon, an eighth of a teaspoon of allspice, an eighth of a teaspoon of ground nutmeg, and a key ingredient to making any haroset sing to make it really come together, guys, is a special wine that we all might know as Manischewitz. It looks like Manischewitz, but it's Manischewitz, trust me. I'm using Concord Grape, and this wine, by the way, is gonna warm you up. If you've ever drink it out of this bottle, it's like the sweetest wine ever. You will literally feel it warm your body. And also, a little tip for you, Manischewitz, any kind of Manischewitz, the Concord Grape, the Blackberry, any kind they have, really, is an amazing starter for any sangria. You know, for when the summer rolls around. That's a great tip for you guys there. I'm gonna add in a quarter of a cup of the Manischewitz. And then just stir everything around really good and blend together well. Really make sure that the Manischewitz gets nice and dispersed through all the apples as well as all the spices. You want everything mixed together well. Now, if you want more walnuts, add more walnuts. If you don't, don't. I mean, you could also make a walnut-free version, and between you and I, I hate walnuts so very much. But, you know, I'll eat it because it's so delicious in terms of the apples and all the other things in there. You can also really, if you want to, there's no rules here, you can sub any other nut you want. 
And after about a minute or so of stirring everything together in our little bowl here, there we have it, our delicious chorosin. Now, in order to maximize the experience, I highly suggest you refrigerate this overnight if possible for at least one hour. It should be nice and chilled before you serve. So I'm gonna pop a lid on it and pop it into the fridge for about a few hours. And there we go, opening up, oh, back of that new fridge. Look at all that space. I'm gonna put you right near my better than bouillon to keep it company. And I'm gonna check on you in about a few hours when you're nice and cool, then I'm gonna try you out. Okay, now that a few hours have passed, I'm gonna take my Hirosin out of the fridge and we're going to try this guy out. Let's take the lid off and oh yeah, we are looking good, guys. Look at how beautiful that looks. It's gonna taste so great. And just give it a nice good stir around in the little bowl here to make sure everything gets nice and combined together nicely once more before we try it out, which is exactly what we're about to do. And Richard is going to have the honors of trying some. First off, Richard, let's show your shirt, everybody. <laughs> oh, bless your heart. Oh, bless yours. Thank you. What is that supposed to mean? Now, like I said before, I'm not a huge walnut fan. Believe it or not, I'm not. I, they actually ruined a chocolate chip cookie for me. If there's walnuts in it, I, I'm like, oh. But, you know, there's not a ton in this. There's only about a cup worth, and the ratio to apples and walnuts is a lot larger in terms of the apples. Um, but, you, like I said, you could add more. So I'm going to try this. But, I want, Richard, I want you to try it first. So, tell me what you think. Mm -hmm. I always feed him. Mm. That's good. Wine and the cinnamon are the first thing you notice. Really? Well, that's good. Very good. No, that's good that you notice the wine first, because I like wine. <laughs> we both like wine. <laughs> a little bit of the nuts. The nuts aren't overpowering. Now, I know that you've had Hirosa before at Seder's and you know, mm -hmm. my household stuff. And, uh, um, you know, what would you say in terms of the ratio? Is it less, less nutty than the other ones, really? Or is it kind of the same? Maybe a little less nutty. You know I don't love walnuts, but I need to try it myself. I can't make something and not try it out myself. That wouldn't be right. So here we go. Do you want me to feed you? Mmm. Mmm. It's really good. And the walnuts, the longer it stays in the fridge, they soften a bit so they're not as crunchy. But they're still crunchy enough. I still don't love walnuts, but I really do love this Florosit. You really taste that amount of chevets in there. It gives it a wonderful sweet flavor. And all the spices combined with it as well really, really make things just perfect. And if you hate nuts, you don't have to add them at all. Just have it apples and make it nut free. And, or you can use different nuts like pecans or almonds or there's really no, you know, rule. Um, but walnuts are the typical ones. Can you so, put this on cereal? Yeah, why not? And I mean, some yogurt. yogurt. You could actually mix it in with some yogurt too. Mm -hmm. Check out the yogurt recipe. See if you want to mix some of it. Who's, there's no rules. You can do whatever you want. Rabbi, guys, this is a classic Passover dish. Uh, really, no Seder is ever complete without it. So I think that you'll enjoy Richard's eating almost the entire bowl at this point. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, for more videos like these with tons of easy to follow recipes, some of them featuring this dude right over here with some southern dishes, go to pressureluckcooking.com. That's pressureluckcooking.com. And hover over any recipe and just, you know, pin it to any board. It's very easy to do. Um, also, go to my Facebook page page facebook.com slash pressure luck cooking like the page you're not going to want to miss out on any new recipes and of course at pressure luck which is my instagram my youtube my twitter or my pinterest um you know you don't have to be standing here this entire time i feel bad you don't have to oh, you, I don't you, have, you didn't want to exit me you have to oh i have to have you exit okay well ladies and gentlemen richard has left the building thank you okay and uh this corrosive it's about to do the same thing because it's so incredibly delicious mm. Mm.